election results are out on June 4th, BJP as a political party has failed to secure an absolute majority. They have no other alternative but to form coalition with other parties to form government at the center. Now, everywhere in India, it is being discussed which party will join hands with BJP to form a long-term government, which leader of which party will be assigned which portfolio, how long the coalition government may last, who will defect and who will not. These are some of the discussions going on in public. Other news items are way behind the background. In the meantime, the Education Minister of Delhi government, Atashi Marlena, made a brief presentation just a few days ago. Her presentation was about the newly declared results of selection tests for admissions in medical college. Acronym of the test is NEET examination. NEET is spelled with N-E-E-T. According to the Education Minister, students of the Delhi government schools who appeared in the NEET examination have performed exceptionally well and significantly better than expensive and well-publicized private schools and coaching institutions all over India. She said this year about 414 students from Delhi government schools who appeared in the NEET examination have been selected to get admission in the government medical colleges. During the last couple of years, number of students from Delhi government schools who are selected to join medical colleges are steadily rising. During the last five years, number of students selected through NEET examination have increased two and a half times. She further added that Delhi government has established a special school after the name of B.R. Ambedkar, where a special curriculum is followed for gifted children from the science faculty of this institution about 255 students appeared in the NEET examination of that 243 have been selected for admission in the medical colleges which is about 95 percent success rate she also added there are 12 government schools where special programs for gifted children is followed students who appeared in the NEET exam from six such schools all of them have succeeded in securing admission, a success rate of about 100%. In reference to this news item, the Education Minister congratulated the administration of schools, residents of Delhi, and conveyed a special thanks to the Chief Minister of Delhi, Mr. Aurobindo Kejriwal, whose initiative and drive has created the opportunity for the children of the underclass to get world-class education at no cost at the government schools, something that has never ever happened over the last 75 years. Before Ahmadmi Party formed the government in Delhi, about 10 years ago, government schools were reduced to their minimum existence. The Congress and BJP political leadership decided to hand over government schools to profit-making private enterprise. Thus eliminating all possibilities for children of underclass families to get even primary education. Soon after Ahmadmi Party installed their government in Delhi, their leadership emphatically declared that their priority was to elevate the physical and academic standard of government schools to a world-class level. Their political leadership forcefully declared many times that the single most important criterion for inclusive growth and prosperity of a nation is to improve the quality of human resource through world-class schooling, healthcare, skills and entrepreneurship development tasks. The Chief Minister of the Delhi Government, Mr. Kejriwal, and the Minister of Education, Mr. Sisodia, made numerous public statements emphasizing the overwhelming importance of government investment in public education, healthcare, and entrepreneurship development. This government also mobilized relatively limited resources to implement such projects on a war footing in Delhi. Initiative and drive of Delhi government in implementing these projects 
instead of support and encouragement are being met with fierce resistance from the institutions of the central government. Negative publicity from the government-controlled mainstream media. Despite sabotage and resistance from the central government, some of their works have drawn attention of international organizations. When a fellow citizen of a given country wins an international competition, be it Olympics, Nobel Prize, or even beauty pageant, it is customary for the nation to applaud, support, and encourage the winner to excel in their future endeavor. In the case of Ahmadmi Party, undertakings of significant projects that have relevance in the future development of the nation, initiatives and drives that are new in the context of India and have never been undertaken over the last 75 years. Instead of encouragement, support and cooperation, the central government mobilized their judiciary, police, income tax and bureaucracy to not only discourage, but somehow stop the projects undertaken by the Ahmadi government. Not only that, but the central government is also actively engaged in abolishing the party itself. Their core leadership, party's core leadership, is taken into custody under false pretext. The mainstream media patronized by the government is conspiring to create public opinion against the party and its government of Delhi and Punjab. In a way, the central government is out to influence common people to work and cast votes against their own interest. The central government is acting as though they are confronting a vicious foreign enemy. It is not our intention to support or oppose any political party in this presentation. Our intentions are plain and simple. It is to make common people aware that it is vital for them to understand in their own interest thoughts and concepts of which political leadership fits the interest of common people, works of which political leadership is professional and compatible with national interest, who can and cannot deliver the promises that are being spread out to gain power, who can submit a blueprint for all the development vote seekers promise, who should common people elect as their representatives in the national parliament. Those who are all out to establish superior schooling for the majority of underclass or those who capitalize on the importance of building impressive statues, temples and buildings. It is essential for all people to understand that 95% of the population who are unable to express their thoughts in English are being ruled by the 5% who are controlling political and therefore economic power of the nation. It is these 5% Anglophone India that are immensely rich and are hell-bent to transfer national resources to Western banks. It is estimated that annually more than a trillion dollar worth of resources generated from your labor, sweat and blood are being transferred to the Western banks. It is these community whom you vote and elect to the parliament so that they can enrich themselves with wealth that you create. You might have heard a piece of news that all of the 543 members of Lok Sabha, every second one has a criminal record and every third one is semi-illiterate. The same piece of news also says that nearly 90% of these members of parliament become multi-millionaires many times over soon after they are elected to the position of power in the parliament. This is the trend running for the last 75 years. Since independence in 1947, people have been made to believe that common people of the nation will someday enjoy a dignified, prosperous life through the system of parliamentary democracy. Why and how? You are told 
because this kind of democracy gives you access to freedom and human rights gives you the freedom to choose one party over the other essentially one criminal over the other one semi illiterate over the other no more no less a one time leader of bjp mr murli manohar joshi once made a public comment you get the government you deserve this comment was made as words of wisdom to the public what he meant was the public must be conscious of their own interest they must be able to evaluate the capacity and worth of the representative they vote for because at the end of the day it is the elected representative who decides your fate every vote voter must remember the significance of this statement it is interesting that mr joshi is neither active nor attached to the bjp party anymore how professional and how competent a political leadership is that realization is a product of a quality of schooling today's education essentially means education in the expensive upstart english medium schools that scavenge on anglo american leftovers delinking indians from their language literature history culture and tradition and education designed to create an elite loyal to the anglo anglo american west political awareness referred by mr joshi cannot be acquired through this kind of education interest of 5% indian ruling class is not only different from the 95% population who are ruled but diametrically opposite to each other a political leadership that is committed to nation building through installation of right kind of schooling is very likely to be a threat to the political party that represents the ruling class this class contradiction is what we are seeing in the real life setting today the bottom line is the ruling parties are not interested in the material gain of the majority population of the nation who live below poverty line they can't express their thoughts in english but they vote once in 5 years to establish that india is the largest democracy in the world this is an eternal struggle between two classes in this struggle if aam aadmi party wins the force of india's human resource will be felt throughout the world else india will remain as it is today a loyal domesticated client state of anglo american west but will continue to be branded as the world's largest democracy if you like what you see and hear please subscribe and ring the bell